titled, and I greet those on the World Wide Web. It is entitled, The Higher Worship of Mount Zion. Mount Zion, where David had his home, which he conquered from the Jebusites, was the tallest mountain in the Jerusalem mountain complex. The shorter mountain, Mount Moriah, facing each other, where the temple was, and, or, or the tabernacle and subsequently temple was built. In the basement of that temple was the threshing floor of Onan that David paid a price for his folly. We come to realize that at the basis of us, when we come down to the final common denominator, the thing that is inside of us is where we met God at the altar of Calvary. Brothers and sisters, this is our driving force. And we have to realize that David was special in the kingdom. The Old Testament man of war came over to the New Testament as the worshiper. He was the Old Testament's symbolism of the new overcomer. And we have to look at closely. A lot of this is tied in to Davidic worship, which is what we carry on today. We begin in Revelations 14 and 3. And they sung, as it were, a song before the throne and before the four beast creatures and the elders. And no man could sing that song but the 144,000 that were redeemed from the earth. 144, 12 by 12 by 1,000. 1,000 is the number of the Holy Spirit. That, state, that takes care of that. 12, the 12 tribes the 12 apostles. In other words, the 12 indicative of the government, Old Testament government and New Testament government. Multiply that by the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit, 1,000. We get 144. I never was, nor will God ever make me to be a second-class citizen. Amen? He died for me so that I can be adopted into his kingdom as an adopted son. And I've come to realize that under Roman law, when you adopt a son, you love him as your own. Primarily because you may not have a son or two, you may not like the way the other sons are going. So the adopted son takes at your debt, he takes your name. He takes your estate. And everything is in his hands. Irrespective of the fact that you had other natural born sons. God adopted me in the kingdom. And the Bible said, it is the father's good pleasure. Amen. And now we come to realize who we are. We are the adopted sons of God. And incidentally, God don't have any grandchildren. You're either a son or you're not. No. Moses, they sang the song of Moses. Moses, Old Testament deliverer, symbolic of the law, came under Moses at Sinai. Moses was described as the meekest man in the world at the time. Remember this? Now, to sing the song of Moses, you must be meek. American arrogance is not going to cut it. We are not number one. Meekness, which is strength in simplicity, is what God needs now. You cannot sing a song in heaven unless you have learned it here. You're not going to heaven to change. You will change under the influence of the Holy Spirit now in this dispensation and then change people go up to sing the songs. Are you following this? 
we have to understand clearly. How do we describe these singers? Revelation 14 and 4. And they which were not defiled with women. Women, write it down in your Bible or someplace. Equals church, equals doctrine, equals denomination. Some people still in this day and age cannot afford to have women pray for them. Or lay hands on them. And refuse to have women in government. Amen? What denominational cobweb is messing up our heads? This is what it's about, brothers and sisters. They were not defiled by denominations, churches, church doctrines. Every denomination has been founded on the vision of a person long since dead and gone. But because we are trapped by their traditions, we carry on. They are they, those, and look at the virgins he's looking after, which follow the Lamb with us so ever he goeth. Where he leaves me, I will follow. Remember Philip? How he was caught up, and taken by the eunuch, and then caught up again? Well, listen to me. If you follow God correctly, you can have many haphazard, caught up, quote-unquote, raptured experiences in your life. Amen? And look at them. Look wheresoever he goeth. And look at how, how they speak. And they were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. And how many times have you heard me tell you, as the heart panted after the water, after the water brook, so pant I after thee. You must love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and then spin around and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? If that's not the case, you ain't singing no song. That's what it comes down to. And this is the essence of the life we live. Psalm 63 and 8. My soul follow it. How? Hard. Hard. This is a dying man, still yearning for God. Paul said towards the end of his life, that I may know him. You mean Paul, after all this preaching, after all this church building, after all this teaching and counseling, all these books you read, he still didn't know that I may know him. And the fellowship of what? Not American prosperity. The fellowship of his suffering being made how? Conformable, not comfortable, conformable in the same pattern, in the same pattern unto his death. Amen? We don't pray for God to make us rich and then we might think about following him. Amen? God, may, God will bless you so you can follow and keep on following no matter what because one blessing is all it takes to follow God. Okay, now, that saying, understand, the next great principle, worship will, is costly. It will cost you everything. Our sister, our, our sister was in the hospital. She came in here with pain in her legs, swollen, black and blue, cold, couldn't sleep at night. But she kept on pressing. God gave the answer. God took care of it. This is the kind of heart you want. I don't know her personal life. I don't know nothing. But this is what he wants. And why does he put people through these things? So he can get closer to them and vice versa. Are you understanding this? No, he never puts on you more than you can bear. So quit complaining. And brace yourself. Here comes another one. Amen. The story of John 12 where the woman broke the alabaster box. Remember that? They said that that box, the perfume in that box, was valued at one year's worship. Uh, one year's wages, wages. It took the woman one year of her money, this was before tax, to put that ointment in the box. And in a twinkle of an eye, she broke it. 
and anointed the master's feet. Today she still remembered. And those who are at the table with him, we do remember them. No. We just give God a little fraction and we demand the blessing. When last have we given him five minutes of solid prayer? Or do we bow our knees and start falling asleep? Have to get up and jump and say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Or, see who went downstairs for me, please. Somebody just went downstairs. Or, see, or do we waste time going down and asking God, Oh God, do this, do this, do this. What is our prayer like? Is it a wish list? Have you gone to Amazon.com recently to buy some books? You always have a wish list. I wish this is, I don't want to buy it now, but I wish I can buy it later. God is not Amazon.com. Amen? Forget the wish list business. We have to go to God seriously. Prayer is business to be taken seriously by serious people. Amen? That's how you get an answer. Now, this is, this is the subject, the text for the message, the scripture. Acts 15 and 16. After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David. It's quoted in Acts, the Old Testament scripture, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins therefore, and I will set it up. Everything's okay? All right. I will set it up. I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. So obviously, there was something in David's tabernacle that caught the attention of God's eye. And if God, thousands of years after, what they, after David had died, can say, whatever he did, I am returning in the end time to rebuild that, that tells me there's something there that God wants. And the revelation speaks of the key of David the key of David is the secret. The key of David is praise and worship. The, it would take something. Imagine the king of Israel conquered all his enemies, built a little simple tent without any partitions, no veil, put the ark in there, and he would sit and compose love songs to his God. God was impressed with David. No, brothers and sisters, what in our life can impress God? What did David do? 1 Chronicles 16, 1 to 4. By the way, the reference this morning is Daniel G. Karam, the tabernacle of David. So they brought the ark of God and he set it in the midst of the tent which, you, which he or you had prepared. You cannot bring God in a house that full of dirty clothes. You cannot bring God in your house and cause him to trip and fall. Huh? You cannot offer God to, a, a drink from a glass of water or wine as you like to call it. That have all kind of old rim, rim around the collar. Understand? You have to prepare yourself to receive the indwelling presence of God. And what you can prepare, he will help you. Because now, divinity is inside of you. Amen? Listen to me. Could you live in a place that's insect infested? Huh? Forget the landlord now. No, need to talk to no landlord. You have responsibility for this place. Do you clean it properly? Do you open it and ventilate it? Do you hoard, or you like what I have on TV, ho uh, hoarders? Huh? Every old tin is still in your house. Why? Every dirty bottle is still in your house. Why? How much bottle you can drink from at the same time? Amen? Amen? And now you wonder why your place is becoming rodent infected? You feed in them 24-7. What do you expect? They will leave you? 
prepare a tent? Have we made any preparations? So we ask God for blessings. Oh, God bless me, bless me. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And listen to me. Praying like that, don't call him down. It makes him very suspicious. Okay? But when he does bless you, if he does, what are you going to do with it? Huh? The last time he blessed you, what did you do with it? This is what we have to worry about. Or what has caused us to lose the blessings of God? So look at what David established in his kingdom. Number one, I put this number one, page two, dancing. Dancing is always before the Lord and not with each other. Amen? And you don't start whining in the flesh to hope to get to the spirit to dance. Two things entirely different. Leave it out. Psalm 149.3 Let them praise his name in the dance. You see, when the prodigal son returned, the father was so happy that he had a party. That tells me God is a brother. Okay? Amen? Page two. We only have one page two. If you're going to waste time turning the page and forget it, this goes to the spirit. No, not for you to look in now. You can read that afterwards. Understand this? Let us be very careful now. God likes his children to worship him in the dance. And with his dance comes due order, decency, and order. Amen? What God do... You, did, you, did you ever see God dancing on MTV? Or VH1? It's not there. So let's do what is right. We all know what I'm talking about. Because, and watch the dancing now. Dancing reveals your heart condition. Inappropriate dancing or comments thereof will make you barren. David was happy, joyful. He put on a priestly effort and was dancing before the ark as he was leading the procession back into Israel. His wife, who had too many Hang-ups, Micah, daughter of Saul, daughter of all order, had so many hang-ups that she could not be joyful that God's presence was coming back to Israel. And she chided the king. And the Bible says, thereafter, she didn't have a single child. She was barren. And failing to appreciate God properly will make you barren. And dancing will bring this out. Amen? Dancing tells you the difference between genuine and hypocritical motion. Listen to me. Genuine dancing will bring you the victory. Hypocritical dancing will make you barren. Amen? Rejoicing. Something hard. Because we only like to rejoice when the fridge is full and we have a whole lot of money in the bank. That's, that might be good. But you better start to rejoice when the fridge is empty. Okay? And you ain't got nothing in the bank. Okay? When you click on in the morning and you look at the account, you see it's minus. Amen? Praise Or oh, it's red. So you better be careful now. Learn to rejoice in whatsoever state I am and be content. Give God praise. Let Israel rejoice in him that had made him. Psalm 149 and 2. Rejoice in the very fact that you're rejoicing in God makes you joyful. And joy has to do with your spirit. Pleasure is with your flesh. Happiness is with the soul. But joy is with your spirit. Amen? Now, shouting. I leave the rest of the scriptures for you to read. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout with God for the voice of triumph. When you shout, triumph is not far behind. Okay? Victory shall be yours. You have to know. And you know, you, you, maybe you don't want to shout in church. You're fine. Maybe you don't want to shout because you, this, is, this is a house of God. We can't shout. Fine. When you're home, and I hope you're in a, a smaller house of God, do you shout? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Something's ain't going to leave you till you learn to shout, you know. Good. What's the meaning of the shouting? 
It brings a release in your spirit because when you shout, you speak it out. You let the word of God come out. The ruah of God comes out. And this is what brings, because Jericho, Jericho's walls fell down on the seventh time around when they shouted. Amen? Shouting will bring down some walls in your life. Next one, praise. Psalm 50, 23. Whosoever, whosoever offereth praise, glorifieth me. My father taught a message here when he taught the first church how to praise God. On a Tuesday night, before on a Thursday night, he had a, a series going called The Magnification of Praise. And he would bring them out and hand them the microphone and tell them, now praise God. And he would walk around them in a circle to make them dizzy. That sidetracked some people. And they couldn't praise. He said, that's all? That's all? You must be joking. Praise again. Remember that, Sister Carol? Praise again. And you didn't stop praising. And, and you, this is not time to fake. Because he's not one to fake with. He will keep your praising all night until the service is over. And that's how we learn because he realized something, that he succeeded and it was his responsibility to teach you his success by learning to praise God. Look, man, he used to live at 12501 Linden Boulevard and the man next door was a police officer and the wife told us one day that they have to move because every Sunday morning they never heard a man cry like this. Huh? Yes. So you want to learn to praise God. Okay. Quit the hang-ups. He died. He was hung up for every one of your hang-ups. Let's get it together. Amen. I learned to praise God. Because you see what's happening in the country. You see what's happening in the world. Sooner or later you, you will go by the, the bookstore and you can't find a Bible. What are you going to do? Amen. You have to hide and read the Bible. That day is coming. Okay. We have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. I was seeing on TV recently. I, 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 it was a, they were talking about all the chips all over the place. Telephone, TV, this, that. No, I saw they have one in the sneaker. In the archery, your sneaker, all this gel business, they have a chip in there. Thank God I still have my alpha gut. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. Go on with your, with, with your Air Nike and your Air Max. They can track you anyway. People have been disappearing from this world for a long time. Okay. Now, praise. Whosoever or, uh, offered praise glorified me. You see, praise was used, Karam says on page 103, praise was used only seven times until the time of David. It's very simple to check this. Go to, to the concordance and see. But the Psalms record the word 160 times. 160 to 7. It means that David got his victories by learning to praise God. Amen. Praise me to extol, to glorify God. It means you some free God and let God exercise some muscles and prove to every uncircumcised Philistine that he is God and besides him there is another. Why do you think they call the so-called dark ages of the church dark? Because in the dark ages you had no music, you had no singing, you were just allowed to sing a few chants. Amen? But nothing. And God made the musical scale. On page 5 of your notes, you will see the musical scale. Every time you hear do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you got to understand something. God was behind that. That's the musical harmony. That is sure, uh, pure mathematics. God is a superb mathematician. Amen? Singing. This word is used... 70 times in the Psalms. Second Chronicles 20, 21 to 22. We know this story. And when he had consulted the people, this is Jehoshaphat, he appointed singers unto the Lord. The first thing, he didn't have a building fund. 
he appointed singers unto the Lord that, he should, that they should praise the Lord in the beauty of the Lord's holiness. And they went forth before the army, before any fighters of deeper life go anywhere. You must have the singing ministry with you, which includes the musicians. They go out front. This is why when there's any problem in the church, you've got to check up here. Amen? And they were, what they were saying, look, look how simple the song is. Praise the Lord for his mercy, enjoy it forever. Excuse me, Sister Linda, do you not see? I'm not more than Mogna. Praise the Lord for his mercy, enjoy it forever. Excuse me, Sister Justin, do you not see? We are surrounded by enemies. They want to kill us. They are heavily up. Praise the Lord for his mercy, enjoy it forever. Are you looking at the enemy? You looking at their sword? I'm looking at my God. Amen. That's what it's about. Every day. You, what about the enemies you can't see? Huh? You're scared about this, that, or the other. If God were to open your eyes and show you who or what really is around you, what will you do? You can't faint. You can't pass out. You can't pretend to be slain because the guy you see is coming hard after you. Amen? They want to get you out of the way. You better stand up and fight then. I don't care if the, foot, if the ground under you feel kind of wet. Stand up and fight. <laughs> Amen? This is what it's about now. Greater is he that's with us than them that are against us. Understand that very clearly. No. And when they began to sing and to praise, the, to, and to praise when they began to sing. You could imagine facing Moab, Amnon, and Mongne. God told you, send the singers and let them start singing. And the singers told Jehoshaphat, today is not a good day to sing. Excuse me, O King Jehoshaphat. It's too hot out here. It might affect my voice. And the songs they want me to sing, I never really learned them. Not my kind of key. Huh? And besides, I don't want to sing next to this one because they can't hold a note. It will mess up an I man voice. What do you think would have happened to them? The Bible says, when they began to sing, he didn't ask them to sing in no key, no note, you know. When they opened their mouth and produced God's harmony, then the Lord set ambushments. All they were doing is singing. I know the kind of, I know the song they were singing. But I won't tell you. The Lord set ambushments. All you have to do is to show up to sing. This is why singers cannot be weak or faint-hearted. Couldn't have too much hang-ups. Couldn't have too much isms and schisms about them. Wouldn't have the atmosphere. Where the atmosphere coming from? What atmosphere did you bring here this morning? Huh? If you could only sing in Carnegie, I will give you a song to sing. You understand? That's about I must decrease as he must increase. And the problem is it's done for his honor. And he says, look, he, he says, yeah, look, man, just send them out, open them out, and sing. And I will take care of the rest. And as they were singing, they were really now backing up God. Amen? As they were singing, God was doing the business. And next thing you know, they have a whole lot of booty to pick up. Three days it took them to gather up what God had left for them. Amen. Thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Psalm 100, verse 4. And into his course with praise. You, this is, you always hear scores in this. This is standard approach to God. You can't come to God with your screw-up face. Leave your list outside. If you're going to meet the president, not even the president, let's say you're going to meet the mayor. Okay? You will get up in the morning, you're going to have some breakfast because you don't want to meet the mayor and your, and your belly making a whole lot of noise. Gas will kill you. Right? 
You would have some breakfast, you would shave, you would bathe, you would dress, you would dress decently because you're going to meet someone who may make a decision one way against you. So, so it is, you're going to God, man. There's nothing else besides him. He's the highest, the ultimate, the last resort. Now, you're going to meet the king of kings. What are we doing? You come with your screw up face? Excuse me, God. I have some things to ask you before I get to the subject of the matter. Yeah. Are you a debater? Huh? Give him. Leave that stuff outside. Leave it outside. Okay? And you go to him. He likes to know sometimes you come for him just because you come to him just for who he is. Not for what he can give you. Okay. Laughing. I don't get much into this. No. Any one of these you can take and twist. Okay? Laughing. Psalm 126 too. When our mouths were filled with laughter, laughter and our tongues with singing, then they said among themselves, the Lord had done great things for them. When God blesses you, you have no choice but to rejoice. Huh? You know how difficult, suppose you win, you, 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 you win a whole lot of money, you know, on the scratch of business or something, or, or some balls that spin wrong in a thing, and you, you hey, my number. Huh? No, you can't tell nobody in different lives. Gambling. Okay. Then the first one come meet you outside and say, any for me? Right? No, no. Christians spend more time scratching off than praying. Okay? Because you know why? They don't believe God can do it. And they demand, you must do it. I must every ticket. This is God. God give me a ticket. Why? Because he says, the wealth of the righteous is laid up for me. And I'm going to get it with this ticket. Really? How much tickets you bought so far? How much you get? No. You could imagine we get some blessing. God blesses us. In any aspect of our lives. What do we do? We can't contain ourselves. We are exuberant, overflowing. Because the God of creation gave us a miracle. So it is, brothers and sisters. For all he has given us. Are we still confined to our fears and inhibition? There's a time to let go and let God have everything. Okay? The meaning of laughing is a triumph to God. And David penned this psalm, Psalm 2 and 4, when it, it gave him dominion over his enemies. I told you before, I'm going to skip page 5. Let's go down to the end now. The reigning church. Page 6. The reigning church. Psalm 149, 5-9. And those of you who have been deep alive for a long time know this almost by heart. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their where? Bed. Good. Let the high praises... Now, if there are high praises, what are low praises? Right. Murmuring and grumbling. If they let the high praises of God be in their mouth. What's in your mouth? Your tongue. Right? What's in the tongue? The tongue is an instrument of life. And, right. You better use it properly. And a two-edged sword in their hand. Okay? The sword of the spirit. Now, so when you swing in the sword, it lines up with what's coming out of your mouth. And you look at two, so you look at, at some Christians, what they're saying and how they're swinging are two adverse effects. To execute vengeance upon the heathen by the word of God. Okay? And the punishments upon the people by the word of God. By reminding them, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. To bind their kings, the strong men, with change, and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written, repent or perish. Amen? And honor, this honor, have all this, who? The wishy-washy Christians, 
who you only see when they have a problem? Huh? Those who only know God when, when they want him to bail him out of a jam? Huh? All the saints. you either in the kingdom. you either a saint or you an ain't. I have told you this before, you know it. Now, what's the saint? Oh, oh let me give you the easier one. What's an ain't? A hypocrite. Ain't hey, nothing. Trying to fool people. Okay? A big mouth, nothing to back it up with. Amen. When I look back over the years, I saw all the mouths I have met. I couldn't find the brain behind them. Is a serious state. Couldn't find the, th the thought process behind them. And they don't understand. When you open your mouth, what's in your heart will come out. Making noise never was tantamount to anointing. All the saints, who are the saints? Those who are sold out. I told you before, it's, it, 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 it's on the front page. The virgins who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Where he leads me, I will follow. Sainthood is worked out in our lives as we yield to him. It's like sanctification. It's a process. Sainthood must be worked out in our lives. Listen to me. You don't go to sleep tonight and wake up in the morning a saint. In the meantime, you undergo your trials, your tribulations, your persecutions, your rejections. This brings you closer to him until you learn to depend entirely upon him. And this is what brings you out. Listen to me. To rule with God, we must overcome. And God is such a good God, he already told you, your name is Israel. You are the Israel of God. You have found favor with God and with man. So from the day he met you, he changed your name. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robes, like the high priest, angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. That day, he wrote my new name down. My name is Israel. And that means I have power with God and with men. Amen? If I have this power, I have to use it all the days of my life. I am not going to heaven to overcome. Because there is nothing in heaven that he can make me overcome over. Understand, now is the time we have to overcome. Now is the time we have to undergo and overgo. Now is the time we have to face all possible trials according to his good pleasure. And come out giving him the victory. There is a lion den, a fiery furnace, and a shipwreck. Waiting for each and every one of us. But there's also victory waiting for us. God never promised to take us out of anything. But he did promise to take us through everything. Let not your heart be troubled. Everything is going to be all right. The best has come. God bless you this morning.